Right, let's get some of your predictions then for the tournament. Dan, I'll start with you. <laughs> what do you want to know? <laughs> I want to know loads. It's going to be very, very enjoyable. Oh, thank you for that. How's that thank for you prediction? That. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. I'll write that one down. Um, who's going to win? I am to... going to say... Do you know what? Gary Anderson. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've done a full 180. He's just Gary a minute ago. thought he was going <laughs> to give up the game at the start of the year. Yeah, I like it. Now I think he's going to win the yeah. biggest ranking event outside wow, the world champion. Okay. I like it. Like I've it. cursed him. He won't now, but Dave Chisnell was going to romp to victory yeah, in round yeah. one. But I, look, I, I think it's very, very possible. Yeah. It's very easy to give the answers of the usual ones. And I swear I've dr I drove down here and changed my mind three or four times. <laughs> and, and I'm going to go for Dimitri Vandenberg. Okay. What a record he's got in that yeah. moment. And what a record. The section to be hint, I believe. Um, I think, you know, I was Michael Smith for half the journey, the winner of the last section the second part of the journey. But just sat here right now, I just uh, think that D Dimmy's in a good place. Really mega tough game against Ross Smith. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just think someone from that section will be less scar tissue mm. in the semi-finals and finals there because yeah. there'll be some brutal games early doors. Yeah, yeah. These record winner, runner-up, semi-finalist. Yeah. Pretty good. I mean, it's getting worse. <laughs> it's actually going, it's on decline, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah. I know how predicted we <laughs> um, First seed to fall. First seed to fall. What? Uh, oh, I, I like don't it. first, is it? Yeah, okay. Do you want me to is look at the schedule? schedule? Yeah, let's do that. Let's get let's it look up. At the, so I've got the schedule here. here. <laughs> so I believe that Dave Chisnell will be the first seed to fall because it's on the opening night. Last game on, Gary Anderson will beat That'd him. Be I think that Joe night. Cullen will end Mike Decker's debut. I think Rob Cross Darrell Gurney is going... I, that could be anything. I don't, it could be a brilliant game. It, it could be pretty average. I don't really know what to expect, but I think Cross just about gets it done. And Gerwin Price, I think, he has lost a bunting before at the match play, but I don't think it's going to happen again. I think uh, the Iceman's a bit too reliable. Icy. And, and icy, yes. yes. Icy. That was um, the word I was going to use. Yeah. <laughs> Ice cold. Um Glenn, you don't have to say first seed to fall, just just a seed to fall if you want. Because I've got to really fancy Chris Dolby to be James Wade. However, as you know, I stand by James is just <laughs> beginning to play really well. But Chris is very confident. Chris is one of them players I believe who doesn't have an awful lot of luck. I, Jamie Hughes was another one in the in the BDO days when he came to PDC. Massive averages, but just didn't you know would lose so many games. And and Chris has sort of gone through that period, but. Again, when you look at his attitude, he's always remained positive. He's, you know, like you say, he's good for his scoring bigger than ever. And like I said, he's, uh, I think it's his time to shine. I think he was delighted that he got Wadey first, huh. but then a bit fed up to see Wadey really kick into gear recently as well. But he's a big believer in his own ability. So I've got to stand by my man, really. I think because obviously uh, Doby had that. Um sort of awful defeat to, to Rob Cross at the, the match play last year where he had that incredible lead and then let it slip. But did, did he feel like a different player now? Obviously, he's, he's won a major. We then saw him in the Premier League, like then said, where he, he was producing these crazy averages week to week, but just not picking up wins or not, not you know, ultimately picking up points in the Premier League. Yeah, I think he's played a lot of good darts. He's played a lot of good darts and he hasn't had as much reward for it as he would like. But I'll say that. It's how it he's goes, Masters it? champion. Yeah. You know. he, I, look, he's, he's an excellent player. And I think he's always going to be dangerous. Uh, I, I view Chris Doby not in a, in a similar way to Ross Smith, really. Um, both recent major winners, both have the capacity to hit big, big numbers. Both seem to be very, very reliable and consistent. But something is that they keep playing well and losing. And that has to change. And look, it has changed for them. They both won major mm. titles. But, I mean, Ross Smith, particularly this year, all, all you ever seem to see is, you look, Ross Smith, 99.5 average loss. That you see it over and over and over again. Even at the World Championship, that amazing record-breaking game with Dirk, Dirk Van Dijenberg. Yeah. I mean, he was better than Dirk for large chunks of that game, particularly in the, in the deciding set, which went all the way. He's still... Lost it somehow. <laughs> it must be so frustrating for him. Um, I, I think that both of them, it would not surprise me to see both of them in quarterfinals, but I just something has to change for him if they're going to win this one. Yeah. Um, one final thing on Chris Dobby, and it's an issue with management teams as well now. He doesn't look the loner now, I, I, I felt. <laughs> 
He's now in this management team with Nathan Aspinall and he looks very, very happy, content. And just having that person in the crowd, not maybe a family member as well, and I just think that could be the extra 2 or 3% for him just to get over that win. Yeah, it's a really good I can't point. believe I'm saying nice things about I him. I know, I know. Maybe you yeah. asked. Yeah, hopefully he listens, Glenn. Um, I was going to ask you which unseeded player goes the furthest, but Gary Anderson is obviously your... Yeah, but if you're yeah. looking for another one, um, I think that maybe... Maybe Ross Smith could be that. Yeah. Maybe Andrew Gilding. Oh, classic. Maybe Goldfinger. Classic. Uh, but yeah, I think somebody from that quarter of the draw is the most likely. Um, but yeah, I mean, Glenn reckons Dibby might might be smashing his way through that draw. And the, Johnny Clayton's in that section. Yeah. Well, I really do. He's a very convincing bet, Johnny Clayton, to be in the mix at the back end of this. Your unseeded player, Glenn? Martin Schindler. Mm. Yeah. Martin Schindler is, is a player where I doubted his bottle at the end. I was even destroyed by him in a Grand Slam one year, but he just I just knew he wasn't going to hit the winning double. And he's just maturing nicely right now, and he's just got that little bit of arrogance about him when I last spoke to him, and I like okay. it. I like Seems it. like he's getting belief, doesn't it? A little bit of belief as well, so I think he'd be my shout there. Do you know what you're doing there, Glenn? You're underrating Danny Noppert like everybody else in the world does. Mm. A man made a lakeside final. You, you of all people should appreciate how hard that is. It takes a great to beat him in the final. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And then just lastly, must watch first round tie. If you're picking one. I mean, I love Chizzy Anderson, yep. but I think that, uh, I think Heta Rock looks brilliant as well. But I think in terms of, it, it, forget about the darts and they could be amazing darts. The one I want to see is the one that's going to be the maddest. And there'll be all sorts of nonsense. There'll be silly nonsense from start to finish. And it's going to be Dirk van Dijvenbode Kim, Kim. versus Kim Hybrex. Because if you think back to not that long ago when the Dutch played the Belgians in the World Cup of Darts, they were both absolutely Oh my gosh, that was brilliant, yeah. <laughs> and yes, we had Dimitri on stage and Danny Nopper, but basically... They we were, were bystanders. We, well, yeah. Danny was anyway. Danny certainly was. But what we're doing, we're with removing the yeah. two most sensible elements of that and just letting the more mad ones carry on over a long format. Like it. Dirk is back playing brilliantly. Kim has only just squeezed in it. He's got an awful record in Blackpool. Yes. He yes. has got a dreadful record in Blackpool. He's only ever won one game. And that was by one leg against John Henderson. But I think that that is going to be immensely watchable. <laughs> Agree? Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yes, I'm going to quickly change my mind here and I'm going to go the game above. I'm going to go someone we haven't spoke about yet and that's Luke Humphreys yes. against uh, Jose de Souza. And Jose is working so much. We, be we believe the problem is that his body movement is overstretching and a bit of a fear when he's throwing his dart. So he's worked so much recently on keeping that body still and just the mechanics of the arm doing the work and to see him get 109 average against Johnny just begins to show and if Jose is confident yeah if we could just see him like he was a couple of years ago but it's been a real wake-up call for him I think he thought the world was his oyster and when he was walking he was walking as if he was carrying carpets under his arms <laughs> uh, so it'd be great to see him come back and just to see the work that he's doing would be great to see on that stage. But I remember the kind of form we were talking about him coming into the World Match Play last year. Then he went to the quarters, was it? But he had that thriller with Gerwin Price. Oh, uh, dude, uh, he it had was... a brilliant game against Rob Cross, didn't he? I think he averaged about 105 over uh, however many legs it was. Yeah. Leg. Um, yeah, he, he can surprise you, Jose. We, I didn't expect him to play as well as he did last year. But they have, as Glenn says, there are a few little signs. He's not doing... Many entire matches playing brilliantly, but he's having these little bursts, and you go, well, it's, it's just tempting because you know what he is capable of. Mm. You know that this man is capable of the spectacular. We're getting little flashes of it. There needs to be more. This week in Blackpool may be the sign that Jose is getting back towards top form. I don't think he's there yet, and I don't think that he's ready to come through a section of the draw with Lou Humphreys, Dirk. Rock, Hetter, Van Gogh. And I think that's asking too much of him. I think he could certainly play his part. He could be involved in some very exciting games. Um, and p against Luke Humphreys, could be brilliant. Um, but there's a little bit of me that wants to see Luke Humphreys do it Van Dijvenbode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the Euros, yeah, Euros obviously, yeah. Final. 